ESPN in just a few minutes. The matchup critical for NCAA tournament seating purposes and has that rivalry flair. Mike Patrick joins us from Durham to tell us why the Cameron Crazies will be crazy go nuts. Thank you, Chris. For three weeks, they've been sleeping outside. Hundreds of students in over 150 tents waiting for one of college basketball's greatest rivalries, North Carolina and Duke. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Patrick, and tonight we'll get to see the final home game for one of the great players in Duke history, Grant Hill. Earlier this week, he had his jersey retired. That is the ultimate honor the program can bestow on this great senior. And what a way to go out against Carolina. It really is special. It really means a lot. The pride, uh, the rivalry. Um, you know, this, this is it. This is the last regular season home game that I'll, I'll get a chance to play against Carolina, get a chance to beat Carolina in Cameron. So, uh, you know, I, I'm definitely going to try to make the most of it. Dick, he is special in a long line of special players here. Mike, when you talk about Grand Hill, you talk about versatility. You talk about winning. He should have the word win on his chest. He won over 100 games, two national championships. And I know some NBA team, they may not take him number one, like a guy in 1984 by the name of Michael. He didn't go number one. They may regret it, baby. Well, we won't regret it tonight. It should be great. Right now, let's go back to Sports Center. is an ESPN special presentation. Down Carolina Way, life, they say, runs lazily at its own pace. And yet, only once a year, the pace absolutely races as two of college basketball's greatest and proudest square off in the heart of Carolina. Dead in the middle, Tobacco Road. Played in venerable old Cameron, where off in the shadows, Jordan, Leighton, Worthy and Heyman all watch. The ghost of those before who have worn the royal or powder blue, who have made this night, this game, one of the most intense and special in all of sport. Two of the most successful programs in the nation, separated by only 11 miles of long leaf pines and long lived pride. A 40 minute blur of blues, frenzied crowd, bragging rights, heated intensity, deep tradition. This is a rite of passage, a way of life, a backyard scrap, a game that around these parts is the national championship. Grant, it's everything you said and more. It is, in fact, the greatest regular season show in all of college basketball. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mike Patrick, along with Dick Vitale. It is great to have you with us. Duke has already clinched the regular season championship in the ACC, but this game means so much more. It always means so much more, doesn't it? Mike, it's electricity here. Throw away the statistics. Throw away the record books. It really doesn't matter in terms of looking at numbers. It's North Carolina and Duke, 11 miles apart. Intensity galore for North Carolina. Their invincibility, as it was projected preseason, they were going to be every Everybody's number one. It's been a little bit tarnished. They're three and three in their last six games. They can get back some of that pride with a big win here today at Cameron. For Duke, Mr. Grant Hill and company want to go out with a big W and lock up the number one seed. What makes it so special, class programs, and in the last three years, give me that trophy, baby. I mean, the guy's sleeping here. You see this trophy? Three of them in a row have been here on Tobacco Road with a chance for number four because both these clubs will be in a hunt for the national title. It is championship week and there is a championship atmosphere in the air tonight. Stadium. Now let's meet our McDonald's starting lineups. First for the Tar Heels of the University of North Carolina, starting at a guard, a 6'4 senior from East Elmhurst, New York, number 14, Derek Phelps. Uh, 
at 6'3", and a junior from Garner, North Carolina, number 21, Donald Williams. At the center, at seven feet, and a senior from Indianapolis, Indiana, number double zero, Eric Montross. And at 6'10", and a freshman from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, number 30, Rachid Wallace. And at 6'6", and a senior from Bronx, New York, number 31, Brian Reese. Your head coach, Mr. Dean Smith. sophomore from Northbrook, Illinois, number 20, Chris Collins. Standing 6'6", and a senior from Western Springs, Illinois, number three, Marty Clark. At 6'11", from Huntington Beach, California, and a junior, number 44, Cherokee Parks. A 6'8 senior from Mobile, Alabama, number 21, Antonio Lang. And from Reston, Virginia, at 6'8, a senior, number 33, Grant Hill. Your head coach, Mr. Mike Krzyzewski. We'll be back with the greatest show in college basketball in a moment. Set to go from Durham, North Carolina, Eric Montross and Cherokee Parks in the center circle to jump it up. Like you can feel that electricity. It's incredible. Montross with the tip controlled by Derek Phelps. Very important for North Carolina to establish a perimeter game out of the gate. Phelps has been hot lately. Donald Williams has come back. Finally had a decent game. Rashid Wallace getting only his third start of the year. Makes a bad pass and it's knocked out to Duke. North Carolina, their senior class, Eric Montross has not tasted a W here at Cameron. The 0 for 3. That's all right, Dick. Neither is anybody else. <laughs> 57 and 3 in their last 60 games here. Hill guarded by Phelps, who is a tremendous defender, as is Hill. Both candidates for the Corinthian Award. Defensive Player of the Year award is Grant Hill showing his versatility, playing on the perimeter. Loves to go baseline from the wing, kicks it out to Marty Clark, the senior getting a start tonight. Back to Hill. Push from Montross. Marty Clark has certainly been a solid player. Montross with his first foul, but Clark really has been solid off the bench and gets a start here as a senior. The numbers on Clark coming off the bench this year, nearly 10 points a game. A little down screen for Grant Hill. One out of two, and it's 2 nothing Blue Devils. He really picks up the pace later in the game. Has a tendency to start slowly offensively, Grant Hill. That's Donald Williams, who's been in a terrible shooting slump. Wallace down low. He is going to be so That's good. I love Wallace. him. I really think he has earned his right to be a starter. Gives him a lot of experience, though, coming off the bench with Kevin Salvadori. USA Today Player of the Year last season out of Philadelphia. Parks, who's hit three long-range shots this year. That was a two. He had his toe on the line. Yeah, he just stepped into that line area. There's the camera crazy. He's going wacky. And you know, they've got a history of centers with range down here in Durham. Well, you know, Christian Leighton certainly had that range. Danny Ferry played some center as well as forward. Reese got caught up in the air, and Stackhouse bailed him out. Wallace. That was Wallace. Hey, excuse me, Wallace Rashid. bailed him out by cutting to the hoop. Yeah, Rasheed Wallace makes that good cut to the basket, but it was the creativity of Reese with that penetration. Oh, it is the trap, the zigzag pass. Collins wide open for three. So well coached against the trap. As soon as the trap is applied, they look diagonal, and Collins delivers it. He's the emotional leader of this team. Look at him. And Dick, for the most part, Carolina doesn't have the quickness to trap people. 
They're a little bit quicker now with Wallace in the lineup yes. as opposed to Salvador. Salvador gives him a little bit more power and strength on the interior. Take a look at Chris Collins. 61 three-point field goals. Fourth best in Duke history. What an outstanding complimentary player he has been. He and Tate. Delay of the game warning against the Blue Devils for hitting the ball after it went through the hoop. Montross, great position. He's fouled from behind by Antonio Lang. Normally, if Montross can set up in the three-second area and catch the ball, he usually Antonio has the power Lang to make that jam from in the lane. They're going to try to throw the lob over the top. Very successful, but he can't gather himself and take it up for the dunk. He gets fouled on a play. Not a good foul shooter. Only 57% this year. Only had six points, and that lost to Wake Forest. I can't figure Wake Forest out. They get beat today by North Carolina Well, State. Childress didn't play. Oh, I didn't know yeah, that. That really hurt him. Yeah, he's all ACC. They separated his shoulder uh, in the win over Carolina, sat out several minutes, came back off the bench. What they did to North Carolina in that game was simply take away the inside and dare North Carolina to beat him from the outside, and they couldn't do it. That's why I think it's very important for North Carolina to establish some jump shots from that perimeter. That means Donald Williams. And he has been in a horrible slump. They would love to see him come out of it. 7-6, Duke by one. Clark just inside the three-point line. Montross kept it alive and tipped the belts. Because of Hill's presence on the floor, they're going to get wide open shots on the wings. They're going to have to make those for the Collins. Nice lob, and Wallace when he gets a chance to jam it. Get out of the way. I'll tell you, Mike, if he gets 30 minutes of action, where do you see his numbers next season? Eric Montross leaves, he takes over inside, and he and Stackhouse are going to be special, special players. Carolina with a one-point lead. I like McGinnis, too, the freshman guard. I would go on Eric Montross and get Cherokee Parks involved early in the game. In the first meeting, he wasn't a factor in the second half. Hill trying to take Phelps one-on-one, lost the ball. Grant Hill for three! I talked to him before the game in the warm-up, and he is really focused for a final swan song to be super here at Cameron. The number 11 all-time scorer, and Antonio Lang called for holding the lead. That's his second personal foul very quickly. He's been a solid performer all year long for Mike Krzyzewski, said he doesn't get enough recognition. What about the class act of Mike before the game? Came out and told the students that if anybody throws anything on the court, he has asked, get it, asked the officials to call a technical. If they call two, he would be gone, and he'd even be willing to forfeit the game. Showed some class against Temple last week, too. Went to the students before the game and said, hey, I don't want any nonsense relating to John Chaney. He always does. Reese looking inside. This is Montross against Eric Meek. Great dish off, and Reese got away from Hill. Excellent interior pass, but it's really the cup by Brian Reese, and the presence of Montross with the basketball has everybody focused on him, and Reese takes advantage and finds the gap. Both teams executing very well. Collins for three. That's what I talked about a little bit earlier, Mike. Those shots are going to be available with Hill with the ball. Donald Williams with his first shot. And you could always count on Donald Williams to bury a jump shot like that, but not anymore. He's been injured a couple of times this year, just doesn't have the touch. Parks with a miss, but draws the foul. Those injuries really hurt him. First it was a foot injury and then a shoulder injury. And Donald Williams hasn't been in sync. Showed signs of breaking out against Wake Forest. When he came back from the foot injury, he had a streak of something like one out of 18 field goal attempts. Then against Virginia, he hurt his shoulder and missed several other games. Mike, I love the way you said, the greatest show in college basketball. And we're really not just trying to hype it. That's a fact. If you don't believe it, come down here and watch the electricity and the emotion all day. They build for this matchup. Parks hits the free throw. Duke back on top by a point. Cherokee Parks, excellent touch. Could get himself a little bit more involved offensively, just moving a little better without the basketball. Gets the roll. 15-49 to go in the first half. Rashid Wallace leads all scorers with six, but Duke leads by two. ESPN's Championship Week is brought to you by McDonald's. What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. 
and by GMAC Financial Services, the expressway home. It's the 192nd renewal of a college basketball classic, Duke and North Carolina. The Tar Heels tonight, six points inside against Wake Forest in the entire first half. They had zero. Duke playing that traditional man-to-man, -man, and they've been burned by penetration. They want to pursue the ball when it goes on the glass. Duke got a great rebounding team. Stackhouse, number 42, is into the ballgame for Carolina. He's an attacker. He really attacks the defense with drive and penetration. Phelps has been shooting more and playing very well, but he missed that one. Hill on the run. His numbers went up offensively when Donald Williams was out. Hart's headed blocked by Wallace. Wallace with that good mobility and agility projected so high out of the scholastic level out of Simon Gratz High School was number one in everybody's poll. Not only can he leap, but he gets off his feet so fast. Look at the presence of, I mean, you see star presence for the balls in Grant Hill's hands. So much happens when he touches the ball. Carolina in the zone off the inbounds play and Parks is stripped. Here comes Phelps. Two on three, and Phelps goes all the way in. No basket, but he's fouled. Eric had that sprained knee, missed a couple games. Then he could yeah, practice he this week. He had a little problem. He caught an elbow in the throat against Wake Forest. Number four all-time assists. Number two all-time in steals behind only George Lynch for Carolina. I really think one of the problems that Carolina has faced, they went three and three in their last six games, is basically a Salvadori comes on the floor that they don't attack the defense, Mike. They really are not attacking with dribble penetration. They play a little bit too much, I think, on the perimeter with the basketball. I think they have to attack more. Phelps hits the free throw, and here are the last six games, and uh, the uh, teams that had been ranked were the ones they lost to, Georgia Tech, uh, Wake Forest, and Clemson, of course, unranked Clemson, and that, uh, that happens about once every four years. Played very poorly against Clemson, his team with Mr. Guthridge on the sideline, one of the real blue chip assistant coaches, Mr. Loyalty. Tied at 12, Jeff Capel is in the Duke lineup, he's number five. He's normally a starter and a steady player, not a spectacular player. The lob for Meek from Parks. Tough catch. When it out, give it to Mr. Hill. Look at the trap coming his way. You don't want to trap him. He's going to find the open man. Oh, nice. Step to the basketball. Clark has to force it over Salvador, but Parks. That's a big-time offensive rebound by the Chief. The Chief gets good low post position. Stackhouse, great job to catch it. Then he could control it and lost it out of bounds. Stackhouse averaging 12 points a game and only about 20 minutes of action. That's impressive. All of the numbers for Carolina are really skewed to the minutes. It's tough to tell who's doing what. Just take our word for it. They're all good. Hill Phelps tried to force him to the baseline and did. Then Meek with a shot and missed it. Offensive rebound around Montrose, and it's an offensive foul. He hooked him. They call the wraparound on Eric Meek. Guys did it, but he was very obvious with it. Mr. Intensity, the West Point cadet, Mike Shashevsky, Mr. K. Watch right here. He's going to hook him with the, oh, yeah. He gets that elbow. Well, I don't know. I don't know. What do you think, Mike? What do you think? It looked more like a foul the first time, I'll be honest with you. Well, we're up in the catbird seat. We're way up here in the sauna. I mean, you talk about hot. Wow. 110 in the first week of March. Leading by two, McGinnis is into the ball game, number five. Salvador blocked by Grant Hill. I was just going to say, Grant Hill's playing soft on the perimeter and giving some help to the inside because he doesn't have great respect for their shooting on the perimeter. Clark to Hill. Big time. Some team is going to regret that they don't take him number one. Could be deja vu 1984 when Michael Jordan was only the third selection. He has seven of the 16 points, and here's a miss. by Williams. Pick Hello. What else can he do? Oh, is he a superstar? A little emotional. You gotta love this 
Prescott, one of America's premier players. Stackhouse just a beat slow in getting there to draw the charge. He's a surfing turfer. I'll tell you one thing when you talk about Mr. Hill. Surf and turf, is that good? Oh, that's fantastic. That means you eat, well, you eat anything you want. You eat some <laughs> nice surf, you eat some nice turf. And you have some turf. <laughs> well, I don't know. Hill for the three-point play, 19 to 12, Duke's biggest lead. Grant Hill has 10, putting on a show in his final home game. See, he's playing soft defensively. Look at Grant. He's almost like Zolman, giving him an extra look at him. 33, he's playing in the lane. He's not even guarding McGinnis. See, he's going to give him the shot. McGinnis Ooh. takes the three and knocks it down. Excellent recognition and making an adjustment to the defensive slide by Grant Hill. McGinnis hitting nearly 41% of his long-range shots, and he's not afraid to take it. He's in there with Calabria at the guards right now. Calabria, another bomb. Clark with a bad pass, knocked away. Three on one. Give it to Wallace. Ah. Got him executed well. McGinnis then has it blocked by me. Not a good play by McGinnis. Should have flipped the lob up to Wallace. Reverse the basketball. Swing it side to side. North Carolina normally swings the ball, Mike, side to side. To get that good low post entry. Wallace wants it low now. He's on me. Got to make that shot. You got to shoot it. McGinnis hit the first, missed the second. They're going to give him that shot. They're going to make him shoot that shot. Look at McGinnis matching up against Hill. Dick, you mentioned the heat in here. It's got to be a factor because Carolina... See how he's not guarding him? He's almost zoning. Grant Hill's like a zone, number 33. He's almost like zoning inside. Stackhouse over Hill. Just let him shoot it and park for the rebound. Carolina not getting second chances. representative of any school could have he's the most versatile and talented player I've had an opportunity to coach I think he still has his best basketball ahead of him uh, I like Grant uh, in everything that he does uh, I particularly like the fact that I think there's not it's not even close who's the best defensive player in the country he plays defense at, at an entirely different level than any kid I've ever ever had Grant Hill with an exceptional first half. He has helped Duke out rebound North Carolina 9 to 4 so far. Look at the stats in the last nine games. And this is with the responsibility of running the ball club. He does a great job. His presence gets everybody else into double figures in the ACC because he becomes the focal point and other people have wide open shots. Reese, Montross, and Phelps all back into the ball game. See how he's playing the ball for Phelps? He's not going to allow him to penetrate. Look at now. Now look at Hill. He's so now he says, get yeah, shoot it. You want to shoot the jumper, Derek? Shoot it. I'll let you shoot it. Look, he's not even looking at the basket. Picked up his dribble, Derek. It's one thing to leave him alone from three-point range. That was from 16 feet, and Calabria drains one. You don't want to leave him alone. When Mr. Williams got hurt, he stepped into the lineup, and he had a solid run, averaged about 15 points a game. Lead is cut to four as we approach the 10-minute mark in the first half. Meek, the tough catch, then tries a wicked and the bounce is right to Grant Hill. Well, they swing the ball nicely. Nice anticipation by Phelps. The pass telegraphed by Capel. Fifth turnover for Duke, and Phelps missed the shot, but he will get the foul. That's what they need a little bit more of, Mike. Taking the ball north to south and attacking the defense. Michelangelo, as we all know, his record has just been impeccable. He dresses also like an unbelievably superstar. Two shots for Penetration to me is one of the keys of breaking defenses down. Duke does a fantastic job of attacking seams and gaps of the defense. 
Indiana does it. Kansas, North Carolina, to me, lately, has been playing a little passive on a perimeter. Phelps with three points, 71% free throw shooter. Look at that wacko. He's got 1,600 SATs. <laughs> and he blanked them. Oh! Phelps gets the bounce, and it's a two-point ball game. Has that 6'8 size handling the ball against one of the premier defensive players in America, Derek Phelps. Look at a great balance he has defensively. Got to get over the top. Tough shot for Hill. Meek offensive rebound. He is hammered. Meek playing very aggressive. He was really aggressive against Georgia Tech in a big win on the road. He had 10 points and 10 rebounds. And they need that kind of positive performance out of Meek and also Clark. Salvadori picks up the foul, his first. Salvadori's minutes are getting a little bit lighter since the presence of Rashid Wallace. As the brain trust, Peter Goddard, Michael Bray on the left of your screen. Rumored to be possibly the head coach at Marshall University. And they'd be making a great choice. The numbers on make 54% as a free throw shooter. Duke but most of these numbers getting better as the season goes along. Mike, what really has impressed me about Duke is their personality as a team has changed with the graduation of Thomas Hill and Bob Hurley, where they were an attacking team defensively. Now they're a team that plays a little softer defensively, but their complementary players really play well together. And chemistry, that magical word chemistry, really exists. They love playing with each other. Stackhouse did a great job, got away from Lang, and Phelps hit him with a bullet. Well, you and I have talked about the one thing that impresses us with Stackhouse is ability to move without the basketball. Capel picked up his dribble, then for a bad pass, got it back off of Meek and hit it. He's been really having a solid freshman year, making the open shot, playing on a defensive end. Not spectacular, solid. State player of the year in North Carolina a year ago. Knocked out of bounds. And Meek protesting the call, saying it wasn't off of me. But he can't talk Italian. That's Scagliata, and he doesn't understand a word he's saying. He's saying goodbye. No capisce what you're telling me. I don't get it either. <laughs> I know. I see that puzzled look on your face. But it's only right now. Who goes to a 2-3 zone? Should be wing jumpers available. But who will take it and who will hit him? See that Stackhouse into the lane. Missed the shot line with a rebound. He made another great cut without the basketball. I just love watching Grant Hill perform. See, now Grant wants a post. He wants him to swing the ball and he wants the ball in a box to take advantage of the size. They were a little slow, adjusted. He's got a mismatch right now with Donald Williams at 6-3 against him. They didn't take advantage of it. Now, for 33. Shot clock down to seven. Meek kept it alive, but Phelps gets the long rebound. Poor possession right here by Duke. Didn't take advantage of Grant Hill in the mismatch. So he's picking up his dribble, Derek, a little bit too much. Phelps is wide open on a perimeter. Nobody's even guarding him. Donald Williams still has not scored. That was only his second shot. And Dick, when you've got a guy who for the first half of the season averaged 20 points a game and is your designated shooter, he's got to be more involved than that. Well, he had 19 points a game during the NCAA playoffs. Then he had those injuries, and his numbers have really jumped, dropped dramatically. He was the MVP in the Final Four last year. Oh, he was brilliant against Michigan. He made all the big shots. Duke by four with the basketball. 8-12 to go first half. Mike Patrick, Dick Vitale with you. and Clark in the backcourt, along with Capel. Actually, a three-guard offense right now. The block by Montross. Nice job defensively. Alley-oop, bad pass. Saved by Stackhouse. Picked off by Lang. Pull-up jumper. Little sloppy. Good yeah. play right there by Derek Phelps. Settle it down. Will somebody tell him they got Eric Montross on the floor? Double zero. Get him the ball. Just did, and Cherokee Parks blocked the shot. He'd be called for the foul. Cherokee says, I can't believe it. Look at the smile on his face. Not a bad idea. If you're not going to stop, if you can't 
stop him on a block, put him on a foul line. Oh, my trust now trying to lock, trying to use that big body. He's going to step to the ball. Now here comes the help. Oh, yeah, definitely contact on the hand. Teams combined 11 for 11 so far in free throws. Played well in that first meeting, and so did Salvador. He made some big jump shots to start the second half after Duke had the lead at the end of the first half. All of Montrose's points have come from the line. He's three for three. Hasn't had an All-American year. He'll be the first to tell you. Missed his first offensive rebound. Stackhouse partially blocked. Stackhouse oh, again is out of bounds. Was on the line. Boy, can he play. Tremendous athletic ability and intensity. Duke by three, 7.30 to go, first half. North Carolina trailing Duke by three, 7.30 to go, first half. Last year in the NCAA tournament, Donald Williams was spectacular, hitting more than 51% of his field goal attempts, averaging nearly 20 points a game. Started off the same way this year, averaging 20.6 points a game. But then he suffered two injuries, and the last 10 games he has played, averaging under nine points a game, shooting 31%. He looks like he has no confidence in his shot whatsoever. However, in the loss to Wake Forest on Wednesday, it looked like he might be back. Like he's a rhythm shooter, what I would define as a rhythm shooter. And when he doesn't have that rhythm and that stroke going, and I'm really going to defend him, I think a lot of that's due to those injuries. Grand Hill is out of the lineup right now. Mike Krzyzewski trying to give him a breather. They don't have a lot of firepower without him. Well, you know, he had a great start against Wake Forest in the game earlier this year, and then fatigue set in. So I think he's going to rest him a little bit as long as he's up on top of that scoreboard. Montrose picks up his second foul. So that's a real problem when you play North Carolina. If they can hang around close with you, with their size, they can wear you down. And physically, they really just take so much out of you with those seven footers they keep sending, the, sending at you. Capel for three. The more and more I see him play, the more I like him. Williams to Rashid Wallace for Rashid point blank range. He's got that nice little turnaround jump shot. They broke that down in their workout yesterday, dude, talking about Wallace and his effectiveness down in the boxes inside. Wallace has eight. He is four for four from the floor. He's going to try to trap. I think Duke's a very difficult team to trap because they're so well drilled. Capel went to the left hand, missed the shot. Collins came up with it somehow, and Duke will start over. And here's a blocking foul. Later tonight, the Ohio Valley Championship. Murray State dominated the Ohio Valley this season. They'll take on Tennessee State and superstar Carlos Rogers, who averages 25 points and 11 rebounds. Hope you'll be with us tonight for the Ohio Valley Championship. That last really, foul was on Phelps, his first. That's really a special to see. Watch Carlos Rogers play at 6'11", his tremendous talent. Speaking of tremendous talent, Grant Hill back in the ball game. Clark open for three, didn't want the shot. Another reason they're tough to trap. They spread the court so well. See that excellent spacing. Grant Hill for three. Meek had his hands on it, couldn't hold it. Nice job by Wallace to get away from him. McGinnis will come back in for Carolina. Take, take a look at the spacing right here. This is incredible. More than 15 feet apart. Incredible how they have excellent spacing. They're so well drilled, and that eliminates teams from being able to apply that double team trapping pressure. 15 to 17 feet apart. Approaching six minutes, Duke leads by four. Williams slashes to the basket. He showed some confidence on that one. The first bucket for Donald Williams. He's a very streaky scorer, so he's capable of stringing together four or five quick baskets. Clark goes baseline. Tough shot. Somehow he got it in. It's a big-time drive by Marty Clark, who's been instant offense off the bench. His first two. He's been troubled by tendonitis in his foot. Great drive back the other one. Ryan Reese with that slashing wing drive. He's been up and down as a player. He's had some good moments, but really not the kind of senior year he was hoping for. Hill off of the screen, missed the shot. Meek offensive rebound. He playing so hard. And when you play hard and you combine that with great size and strength, a lot of good things will happen. Dick, this is the best I have seen Duke play on the boards all year. Yeah, they really are not a great rebounding team. In fact, they're only out. 
averaging like a half rebound better than their opponents all season long. The lead back to four. Williams wants it now, and air balls one off the glass. That shot, really a poor shot right there. Didn't have any balance at all. He's only one out of four from the floor. Duke really trying to control tempo. They'll run if the opportunity's there. If not, they're going to back it out and play five on five. Capel almost dribbled into a double team. He'll gets away. Over to Capel for three. The long rebounds have really helped Duke. Clark. And he traveled. Marty Clark with great hustle. The redhead from out of St. Joe's, out of Westchester, Illinois. Same school that produced Isaiah Thomas. He's from Chicago. Yeah, look at Mike. What is he doing? What is that, Mike? What is that? Showing a little belly. Look at his rolly eyes. And there's Dean saying, what is Mike showing? I mean, I could get over Mike. What was he doing there? Tell me. Don't ask me. <laughs> Coaches, there is some special breed. I was the wackiest of all time. I've seen Madonna do that, but I think it was something different. Madonna? She played basketball. 32-28, Duke by four. Look at Hill's zone. Hill is like zone. McGinnis has got to make the open shot. They're not going to guard him. He's capable of shooting it. Wallace, tough oh. shot from the baseline. Calabria tipped it in. Good offensive rebound by Calabria. Good fingertips. Jeff McGinnis is wide open because Grant Hill is gambling. He's becoming a gambler defensively. He's sold it. This is Collins. Reese out on him. So many things you can do offensively when you got this guy in your lineup. He created that opportunity. Lang wide open, missed the 17 for Guess who got the rebound? Clark for three. Wallace takes it down. Whose game plan, obviously, is to knock down that three, spread the court with a good shot from the perimeter. Salvador. Calabria kept it alive. We got a jump ball situation. Possession arrow will give it to the Blue Devils. Timeout on the court. 3-11 to go in the half. Two leads by two. Dick, 3-11 to go in the half. By Grant Hill's playing like a one-man zone. See, we're going to see him right in here. He's going to play like a one-man zone in this area because he doesn't respect their perimeter game. See, right now, look at him again. See in this area here, all kinds of space. Now, look at Grant, number 33. He's saying, hey, look look at him zoning. He's letting McGinnis go away. He has ball, vision. He sees him all the time. They call that big point. You get between the man and the ball. What versatility, not only offensively, but defensively. And certainly one of the top five players in the United States, an All-American. Simply daring North Carolina to shoot from the outside, and that has been the way Wake Forest and Virginia, in particular, have beaten them this year. I'd like to run down and put on a Carolina uniform and let him give me that shot. I'll knock that down, Mike. I'll knock it down. Yeah. Look at North Carolina zoning now in a 2-3. Trying to match up. Got Collins and Clark and Hill in there. Pretty good long-range shooter. Parks over Montrose, who got a piece of it, and it's out to Carolina. They're trying to go to a high-low. Eric's got to get involved a little bit offensively. He has really been a non-factor on the offensive end. And you can't have a 7-1, 285-pound man like that not touch the ball. McGinnis in there for Phelps. Calabria in for Williams. There it is. They must have hurt us up here. Oh, they get an offensive foul on Montrose. That is three on Eric Montrose. Oh, They're going to get him for the push down inside. They're going to establish position. Park's trying to front him. He's trying to front him. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Wow. No I way. Know, I know it's on my blind side up here in the booth, but I didn't see that. No, that looked like a no call. Instead, it's the third foul on Montrose, who goes to the bench with 2.31 to go in the half. I think Parks was whispering in Meeks' ears. Hey, I got one on him. I got one on him. I was lucky. One and one. That's big. But the one team that can afford it is North Carolina. That's right. Because they can bring in another seven-footer who can plug. Parks goes to the line. Hits the first. He has seven points. Dick, you were talking about Montrose not getting the basketball. Here's the difference in the centers. 29 times Carolina's had it. Montrose touched it only seven times. Parks has had it twice as much. And he has zero for zero in terms of field goal attempts. And I don't think you can have that kind of player on good anticipation by Parks on a backdoor cut by Stackhouse. Clark was beaten, but Parks covered up for him. Clark couldn't hit the layup. Meek gets it back. 
Clyde will go the other way with a foul inside. Marty Clark did exactly what I was talking about a little bit earlier that I'd like to see North Carolina do. Attack the defense. Go north to south. Here goes Marty Clark. Now watch him go north to south. He says, Rasheed, I don't care you there. I'm taking this baby right to the goal. I'm going to let you try to block it. Look at the left hand. Rasheed says, you're not serious bringing that in here. You almost had a conversion. Grant Hill nearly got the tip, and then Eric Meek picks up the foul. It's his second. Both teams in the bonus. I really believe this game is big psychologically for North Carolina. Three and three, labeled invincible basically by all the predictors coming out of the gate with four starters in a great freshman class. They need this win for some momentum. And if they win this game and they can go on and win the ACC tournament, they have an outside shot of still being a number one seed if they have three W's over Duke. Salvadori just hit both free throws. A young man out of high school, not highly recruited, has obviously worked very hard during his college career to get where he is. He's played very well for this team. Rasheed Wallace gambling on defense. They go to that little run and jump, trying to get to a trap. They go sprint into court. Bring it back out to Hill. Under two minutes, Duke by two. Swing it side to side. Shot clock at 10. Now it's up to Hill. So here's where that five second count would really hurt Duke. But with a guy like Hill, it doesn't hurt. Oh. He can keep the ball as long as he wants. Just work the shot clock down and then bury a 14 foot jump shot. No problem. That was a tough shot. Boy, a tough runner there by Williams. Couldn't get it to fall. He's one out of five. Meek had it stolen away and put in. Great job by Wallace. Machine Wallace again demonstrating this tremendous potential. Boy, with he and Stackhouse and McGinnis, there's three tremendous freshmen to build on. They'll form the nucleus next year, along with Pat Sullivan sitting out. Tough pass to Meek. He's pushed on the way in, and it will be Stackhouse. Rasheed Wallace, there he is, number 30, spinning in a lane, a nice rotation. Look at that backspin. Just what you want, that backspin. You know, Dick, sometimes this Duke-North Carolina game, so much is expected of it, it doesn't live up to its potential. But this one certainly has so far. Outside of one stretch where they were both a little sloppy, these teams have played very, very well. They played well. They're playing with electricity, intensity. They're playing with a purpose and an understanding of how to play the game. Spread the court, move the basketball attack the traps for Duke. Cherokee Parks hits the free throw. He has nine points in the first half. John Saunders will be in our studio for the Delta Fawcett Halftime Report. All the top 25 scores and highlight. Kentucky upset. And another member initiated into the final field of 64 for the NCAA tournament. Parks hits them both. The lead back to four. See right now playing very soft all day on Derek Phelps. They have an extra defensive player with Hill. Reese, that's his game. Cutting to the basket using his quickness. And Reese has six points. Hill has just been marvelous tonight. And as soon as I say that, he turns him on over. He's got Donald Williams with a bounce pass. Williams picked up by Collins. Puts it up and he's fouled. Nice spinning move by Donald Williams in the lane. Game tied for the fifth time. I still have a crazy notion. I'm not ready to give up on North Carolina. Derek Phelps, his eyes are up. He drops it down. There's Donald Williams spinning in the lane, hanging, twisting. I'm still not convinced that they're not going to be the team to be in that national championship. If they turn it up a notch, each guy gets a sense of pride and starts to understand you got to play with emotion and play with feeling and play with chemistry. I really believe they're still going to be the team to beat. Carolina takes the lead with 35 seconds to go in the half. Duke has led most of the way. Play for the last shot, spread the court. Understand, manage the clock. Time management so important. It's about a five-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Clark had a three, passed for the baseline jump. Meek again. Has Eric Meek really played an aggressive game? But Carolina has a shot for the last shot. Off balance, Phelps fires one up, knocked out of bounds to Duke. Zero on the clock, or to North Carolina, zero on the clock. The half is over. And what a half it was. Duke in Carolina. It's a one-point lead. Let's join John Saunders with our Delta.
the Fawcett Halftime Report. John? All right, Mike and Dick, thanks a lot. And you're both absolutely right. This one is living up to the hype. Just a one-point lead for Duke at halftime. And welcome to the Delta Fawcett Halftime Report. Plenty of action elsewhere on this Saturday of college basketball. Some conference tournaments underway. We'll get you up to date when we return. ESPN's Championship Week is brought to you by The Mash from Fila. Fila, change the game. And by Budweiser, Beachwood aged for a crisp, clean, classic taste. ESPN's Championship Week is brought to you by Power Bar, low-fat, highly nutritious energy. And by the new Dodge, a proud sponsor of the 1994 U.S. Olympic team. temperature in Old Cameron Indoor. It is close to 100 degrees on the court. If it gets hot, you ought to be upstairs in the rafters. If it isn't 125 up here, he's got hair. Grant Hill was marvelous at the offensive end, but maybe more important at the defensive end. Well, he was able to gamble defensively. He was able to zone. He really was not playing straight man-to-man. -man. Take a look at him zoning. Look at all that spacing available on a perimeter for North Carolina to shoot the jump shot. But they're going east and west instead of north and south. See again? Look at him zoning. Look at all that spacing. You got to attack the basket. You got to take the ball to the goal. Then the traps. Watch Lang now. He anticipates the trap, and there is Collins and spotting up. They're in a proper alignment. They're so well drilled against the trap, the diagonal pass, and Grills, Chris Collins finalizes by knocking down the trifecta. All right, take a look at the first half stats. Both teams shooting over 40%. Carolina nearly 50. Both excellent from the free throw line. Carolina only one out of three from long range. Duke controlling the boards and getting more second chance points. Carolina, as you would expect, tougher inside. Here's the stat for you. Eric Montross, no field goals, one point. I think that's the X factor when you think about it if you're North Carolina. You're only down one, and Montross hasn't gotten the board with a field goal. And they come out of the box looking for him and finding him. It makes you wonder why it doesn't happen more often. That was a designated call. They set that up during their halftime, and that's why Dean Smith's a Hall of Famer. You got to get the ball to the big guy. Parks from 17. Parks has the ability to step out and shoot the jumper. You talked about it a little bit earlier. That's very typical of Duke centers in the past. He has a dozen. The Duke lead is back to one. Wallace working hard down low, and he is held by Antonio Lang. That's three on Lang. That could be big because Lang certainly has been a versatile baseline performer all year long. You know, Parks makes that open jump shot at six foot eleven, and that's part of the Duke system. They start you out working on the interior as a big guy, and then eventually move you out. Phelps looking inside. Wallace comes out to help. Montross again as Parks was fronting him in a nice lob by Phelps. I think they can take advantage of Eric a little bit more. And that again is going to make open shots on the wings by attacking and getting the ball inside and establishing Montross. These two terrific teams exchanging the lead back and forth. Parks against the double team. Got it anyway. He's got a nice touch, Mike. If he gets the ball in deep, he's got the great rotation. He already has 14 points. That's his average. See, Grant Hill's now going to gamble and try and give some help inside the park. See, he's not even guarded, Phil. Shoot it, Darren. He's taking it into traffic, picking up his dribble. Shoot the little jumper. He's capable. Shoot it. He missed that one off the back of the rim. He had been shooting more in the last nine or ten games and hitting them, but he's certainly reluctant to do it. Like, you know what happens? You really feel the pressure when you're wide open like that. Collins wide open and missed one. It's like they're saying, we don't respect your shot. See this? They say, we don't respect it, Derek. We're going to let you shoot it. Wallace will shoot it from just outside the free throw line. Parks with a rebound over Montrose. Parks getting better and better. This is one of his fine efforts this year. And Hill nearly had his pocket pick. May have gotten away with a push off from Phelps. Hill just inside the line. 
likes to shoot the jump shot off that hard dribble. He uses the dribble to pound it into the deck as almost a pass to get himself set for that rhythm to shoot the jump shot. Grant Hill, the number 11 all-time scorer in Duke history, has 16. The Blue Devils have the lead again. Now they switch. They have Grant Hill playing Reese as opposed to Phelps. Actually, they're zoning. They're showing a little two-free zone right now, too. And Williams tries to penetrate and does. That's where you want to go against that 2-3. You want to split the top two people. You want to attack the lane. You want to attack, go north and south and attack that middle. One point game, 17 minutes left. North Carolina comes back and said, we're going to 2-3 zone. Again, meaning the wing jump shot should be open for Capel or Collins. They swing the ball and overloading against the zone. And they run to double team parks. There's Collins wide open. Wide open against the zone. The wing jump shot will be there. Look at all the Dukies. They love it. Oh, this is the best rivalry in all of college basketball. 11 miles apart. North Carolina and Duke. And they're usually in the top 10 in America. Right now they're in the top five. Phelps with a left hand. Tough shot. He wants to take the ball to the goal. Goes to the basket. Gets the conversion. Eric's capable of shooting that perimeter shot. He did it against Florida State. I did that game. He was knocking down the three. Duke's lead cut to two with 16-10 left in the game. North Carolina stayed in the 2-3 zone. Well, both of these teams playing well tonight. This is all you can ask for. The last regular season game. Parks against Montross. Fade away. Yes! Is he on fire? He's in the zone. The Chief catches it on a baseline. Oh, did he break the heart of Jimmy Herron? Sheriff oh, Key Parks with 16 points. Reese fouled by Capel on the way in. UCLA wanted him so badly. Remember, at stake here, I believe if Duke wins, they lock a number one seed. Certainly, Missouri's going to be number one seed in Arkansas, and it looks like Connecticut. Individual matchup make headlines like the first meeting of Virginia's incumbent super center, Ralph Sampson, and the new kid on the low block, Patrick Ewing of Georgetown. The clash of the Titans lived up to its height. In a seesaw battle, Sampson prevailed 68 to 63, despite Ewing's aggressive play in the paint. Ralph's 23 points, 16 rebounds, and seven block shots was a college basketball magic moment. Point well played game, and the battle goes on inside between Parks and Montross. Well, Montross is a different kind of center. He's a low post block center. He's a power guy. He wants to lock in a box, get in the lane. He wants a regroup, and there's Mr. Parks is going to show his agility. He's a different kind of center. He's going to step away and show he's got a little bit more versatility as he can shoot the fadeaway jump shot. And here's the difference. Parks has gotten the ball 24 times. Montross only nine. If you only touch it nine times, you're not going to get many points at him. Gamble for the steal, and Wallace goes down the lane. Phelps wide open for three. Got it back. And here's a foul on Marty Clark. That's a good shot, though, by Derek. He has to take that wide-open shot. Came out of New York City. Expectations galore in this recruiting class when they arrive, and they have really lived up to it. Minus Cliff Rozier, who was part of that class. In fact, Michael Jordan told me yesterday, if he had to pick an All-American team, Cliff Rozier would be first-team All-American. That's Mr. Jordan, along with Hill, Jason Kidd, Daniel Marshall, and Glenn Robbins. That's interesting. Williams maybe trying to get his confidence back and gets an offensive rebound. Steal. That was Reese, I believe. No, is that Williams? That was Donald Williams. Donald Williams, yeah. Donald Williams up there with the offensive rebound. Normally, Dickey's taking the shot from outside. Tonight, he's trying to penetrate. I was just going to say, Mike, we haven't seen him shoot that patented jump no. shot. Had one early and missed it. Parks! What a night, Cherokee! Parks is having 19 points. See, he didn't have this in the first meeting. That game won by North Carolina. Stackhouse nearly lost it. And Grant Hill knocked to the floor. Stackhouse collided, and Hill was down for a while. And the crowd going. Clark threw it away. Three on two. Stackhouse fouled by Clark. He saved the layup. Jerry Stackhouse really explodes to the basket. Things happen. He's an attacker. But you know how he's an attacker? Look at his free throw attempts on his club. Only playing 20 minutes a game. He has gone to the line more than anybody on the team. That's right. Leads North Carolina in attempts. He's 
would shot. think as much as Phelps would penetrate, he might be in that category. Third foul of Marty Clark. Stackhouse has attempted 165 free throws. Montross 164. And there's a big, big difference in minutes played. Stackhouse only with three points tonight, however. Salvadori comes back in. Montross will go out. Again, it is extremely hot in this building. And Dean Smith trying to give his guys a breather early. Fatigue could really be a factor in the last five minutes of this game. Size could be the difference. And Duke plays essentially seven players. And this guy really asserts himself on both sides, offense and defense. Grant Hill. Hill against Phelps. Really has a big size advantage against him. Collins, nice penetration, but Parks couldn't hold it. And they rule it was last touched by Carolina. Chris Collins has got to get a little bit more free for his jump shot. I think he's really in the zone in terms of shooting it. I watched him in a warm-up, and he was really knocking it down. He had two big ones so far in this game. Lang loves to drive. Collins with a run. Salvador kicks it to Phelps. Got to hand to Williams. They had Stackhouse on a baseline. Williams! I tell you, he's making almost impossible shots. Maybe that's what he needed, Dick. The wide-open jumpers wouldn't go for him. Donald Williams has 11. It's tied at 53. Wow, wow. You talk about excitement. Hill against Phelps, and Phelps called for the foul. One of the best offensive players in America going against a real old Rambo defensive specialist, Derek Phelps. How about this conference, Dick? On this floor right now, you've got Derek Phelps, who Dean Smith said is as good as anyone he's ever had defensively. Grant Hill, who Mike Krzyzewski just praises all over the place. Go up to Virginia, you got Cornell Parker, who I think is the best defensive player in the country. I just voted Wednesday. I did a special on Sports Center on my fast break and definitely picked Cornell Parker as the premier defensive guy in America. Play inside and outside. Beating pretty good competition. Parks had to pick up his dribble, got to get rid of it, Meek helps. Well, Meek did a great job stepping to the ball, knew he was in trouble as a release man. Hill, tough shot, wouldn't go, Salvadori with a rebound. Salvadori, a very good, unheralded player. See, that's running to the spot for the jumper. Calabria, wide open, got his own rebound, steps in. Montrose. Here comes Duke, Collins with the ball, looking for Hill. Takes it himself, and he's fouled, and Phelps really upset about the call. Thought he threw the charge, and so did Dean Schmidt. I thought he did as well. Not a good play by Chris Collins. He should have given it to the trailer. Grant Hill's on his right, but Grant Hill's got to communicate. He's got to scream it out. He's got to say, Chris, I'm on your right. Chris, I'm on your right. Grant Hill was wide open, coming on the right. Easily could have been a charge. Great job by Phelps. And there is Doug Collins. That's the dad. Doug, outstanding player, Illinois State fame, does a great job as an analyst in the NBA. Terrific player, Two shots. wonderful player to watch in college. Oh, he was special, and even when he played in the NBA, and he played in Philadelphia. But his son gets all the good looks. I met the mom today. I <laughs> met the mom, and forget it, Doug, she gets, gets all the good looks from the mom. Duke goes back on top as Phelps picked up his third. It's a one-point game, 13-22 to go. Well, what's big right now, he has three and Lang has three as well. And Montrose has three. Montrose got his three in the first half. Nice touch by Collins, makes the second shot. Eight points, a two-point lead. That's what it's been most of the night. Calabria. Got a nice screen from Montrose. Oh, wow. And a little showtime. Baseline. And that's only supposed to happen when Michael Jordan played with that Carolina Blue. A reverse left-handed twisting layup by Dante Calabria. Dante. Tied at 55. Dante the magician. A little David Copperfield there. Lang cut off. Meek. Tough shot. Montrose blocked him from behind. Good defense by Carolina. He had a seven-foot sandwich with Meek in the middle between Salvadori and Montrose. You talk to the Duke players, they'll tell you that size of North Carolina really wears on you. And North Carolina's playing focus tonight. They're playing with some intensity. Lang. Dumps it off inside. We've got a foul as Tony Moore. But he's on the court for the first time. The sophomore from Washington, D.C. He's trying to get some PT, some playing time. And I that was four on Eric Montrose. He's got to take him out of the game. 43 on the clock, a 
tie game. Write that down, Mike. We're looking at 55-55 when he goes to the bench. As Tony Moore doesn't get much playing time. Look at number 30. Moore getting a chance to play in this big game. Montross will leave with one rebound and two out of two field goals. The reason Tony Moore is getting some minutes right now, Lang with three, but Mike Krzyzewski trying to preserve some of his key players for the latter stages of this game. Moore averages less than a point a game. Played in, this is his 14th game this year. What a job this guy has done since he arrived from West Point, hired by Tom Butters. Didn't have a really super record at West Point, but recognized some of his great teaching ability and certainly was sold on by, by Bobby Knight, who made a call for Tom Butters about his former captain at West Point. Duke has missed only one free throw tonight. They're 11 out of 12. They lead by one. North Carolina shooting well on the line as well. Yep. This is McGinnis. Calabria. Holding call inside, going to be against Moore. Quickly picks up his first. North Carolina, Mike, again, not shooting in a 50 percentile area, and usually that means a nightmare. In fact, in their six losses, they have shot like 41, 45 percent. McGinnis trying to go back door. They almost had him. Now Calabria runs the baseline. Nice catch. Kicks it out to Stackhouse. Meek with a rebound. Eric Meek having a sensational night. Six rebounds for the reserve center. Stackhouse missed that open jumper. That's the one area he has to work on. Lang, beautiful move, and goes, and he's fouled. Holy cow, what a shot. Antonio Lang with that spinning jump shot. Chris Collins, the emotional leader, right in his face. Says, I love it, Antonio. Every crazies love it. Came from Mobile, Alabama. Had a little bit of a down year according to many people he came back this season dedicated himself worked with peter Gadet on his jump shot the assistant coach here at duke and has really had a solid senior campaign oh, a great spin move to get open and then he drained it and drew the foul from salvadori his second many people look at this duke team and i really think they've overachieved all year long and i think the reason is you got a superstar in grant hill a very good solid post player in cherokee and then all the complimentary players understand their roles and they have tremendous love playing with each other but like so many teams dick the consistency has been lacking here's a block inside mcginnis gets it back kicks it to williams wide open for three doesn't want it tries another one of those tough runners and he's been sensational on those things i can't believe it you and i are looking at each other yeah i mean we're not seeing the legitimate jump shot out of donald williams all night he has 13 points here's hill back the other way they're stealing some minutes with Tony Moore on the court right now. Having a hustle and scrap. Grant Hill misses a three. It's off of Moore, but now they say last touch by Carolina out to Duke. We're down to 11-27. It is still a two-point game. Last 10 minutes, I try to just uh, have my hands on everything. I try to be there on defense, try to get a key rebound, uh, an important uh important shot important field goal or assist i try to be in on every play and uh really just try to, that's the important part important time in the game that's the time when when we win that's winning time and i like to be a big part of that winning time that's when superstars step up and he certainly falls in that category there are several of them on the court tonight guys who can really play this game they go for the double team try the trap again he just dribbles at him Oh, what a great look. Oh, yes. Look at that love. Look at that emotion. Look at the emotion of Chris Collins. They love it seeing a guy like Tony Moore who doesn't get a lot of accolades, doesn't get a lot of playing time, comes up with the big jam. There's Grant Hill showing that clutch passing ability, and he dumps it. Moore wide open. I guarantee the scouting report didn't talk too much about Tony Moore. No. Not a guy who only played in half the games. He scores 0.9 a game there's something special about playing with emotion and chris collins brings that to the table and it becomes contagious with all the other players for do flanks the free throw the lead is back to four that's a big lead in this game foul will be on more holding wallace he's picked up two since he's coming the game look at this grant hill talking to more saying look you're doing fine relax what a leader grant hill what a leader when you heard 
the soundbite a moment ago, him talking about the last 10 minutes of games. If you took what he does in the last 10 minutes of games and projected it over an entire game, in the close ones, he is averaging over 20 points a game. In the ones that aren't close, it's down to 16. Well, so he steps up. Doesn't shock me, though, Mike, because if it's close, no. they want to put the rock in his hands and allow him to become the guy that controls the tempo of the game. Salvador, who has developed that nice baseline touch, cuts it back to two. He can use either hand, Salvador. Was big in that first win by North Carolina. Man, this has been a great game. Oh, he slipped. Got a little ahead of him Oh, a little showtime. Where's Meadowlark Lemon and all the dribblers when you need them? Antonio Lang tried to keep it alive, committed the foul. That's four on Lang. Good foul is on number 21, Antonio Lang. Look at Grant Hill right here. Six foot eight. Foul. McGinn is trying to check him. He falls to the deck, but never loses control of the basketball. Look at this right here. Has complete control, laying on the ground. Little dribbling act. Look at this here. Little Marcus Haynes, years ago, with the Harlem Globetrotters. That was the seventh team foul against Duke. So North Carolina will be shooting the bonus. Lang has to go out. Meek comes back in on the front line. Meek, Parks, Clark. Capel and Grant Hill for Mike Krzyzewski. Well, you know, the ACC title regular season is Dukes. But remember this, number one seed in the nation in terms of the NCAA tournament. Right now, Duke wins this game. I think they're a lock for number one. However, North Carolina can keep its hopes and dreams still alive. If they win this game, there will be two wins over Duke. And if they can go on and win the ACC tournament, they still can get that number one seed. We are tied for the eighth time in the game, 61 all. And of course, this could be a preview of the ACC final. Although this year, who knows? Well, North Carolina's locked up the second slot with Wake Forest losing. Look at that glide and hang. Offensive foul. Did a nice job of holding its ground inside. Well, they rotated over defensively, squared their body on Grant. They do a great job. There's the big gap in the defense. But well, look at this here. Right there, Salvadori has great presence, takes the charge for the Carolina Blue. And they might not have made that call, except Grant Hill used that left arm and got it up in Salvadori's chest. He may have been able to slice between them. Carolina with a chance to take the lead. See Derek wide open again. Wide open on the wing. Look at Derek. Wide open. Shoot the ball, Derek. I'm going to scream at him. Shoot. Williams with a long range jump shot, and that's probably why we haven't seen him do it tonight. He has no confidence, it appears, in that shot. He seems to be drifting on his shot, not squaring his body. Hill for three. Two on two break. He's got now the trailer. Three on He's got two. the trailer. Wallace in the middle. There's the trailer. Yes, sir. He has the trailer. Great play by Phelps. And they have traditionally waited on that guy to fill on the fast break. Carolina regains the lead. 63 61. Nine and a half minutes to go. That is their biggest lead of the game. Capel. Air ball. Save to Parks. And Parks is fouled. Grand Hill saved that ball. Did a super job with that head fake and ball fake to make the foul happen. He draws the contact. Now watch the save by Hill. Here goes number 33. Look at the agility. Look at the balance. I mean, he's just like his dad Calvin when he played for the Dallas Cowboys. Parks will go to the free throw line with a chance to tie it. They were chanting when the Hills walked in, Calvin and his lovely wife, when they walked in, the crowd began to chant, another son, another son, <laughs> yeah. another son. Quickly. As a beautiful mom, she roomed with, we have said it time and time again, Hillary Clinton in college at Wellesley. That's 19 points for Cherokee Parks. He's hit seven out of seven from the free throw line. Finally misses one. The lead is a point for Carolina. And the Tar Heels have the ball. Wallace has done a solid job in the start. Only his third start, Rasheed Wallace. There it is again. And not guarding Derek Phelps. Hill zoning inside, able to give some help. Wallace working. Shoot it, Derek. Inside. Step up and shoot the three. Shoot the trifecta. He's shot, capable. Shot clock at 12. Phelps trying to take Hill on his own. Shot clock at 6. Montross. And it got the roll. Nice shot by Montross. Well, good shot by Montross, but it was set up with that excellent bounce pass to the lead hand by Derek Phelps. Three-point game. 
six and counting. Mike Patrick, Dick Vitale with you from Cameron Indoor Stadium, two of the best in the country, locked in a duel. And remember, North Carolina has had their pride a little bit tarnished over the last six games, three and three. They need this win psychologically. Phelps with a pick, parks back, and he bumps him and Phelps. Oh, look at anywhere. Oh, what an impossible shot. There's a little bit of motion, something they need. Even Dean is smiling. And a bad decision by Cherokee Parks. If you're going to foul him, foul him. There he is, going to the goal. Ooh. He doesn't make contact with the coming from the shot. He just bumps up. And look at Derek from out of New York City. Gets a nice hug from another New York City. Big Apple. Reese says, I like that, Derek. Phelps has eight a seven-game streak until Wake Forest where he was averaging over 15 points a game when they really needed it. Makes the three-pointer. A six-point lead, the biggest of the night for Carolina. Let's see if Duke can respond. Well, here's where Duke needs a big basket, and right now, Grant Hill's got to have the basketball and create an opportunity for someone. Capel nearly had another pass picked off. That's where you want to go. Get the ball in his hands. Baseline jumper, Grant Hill drains another one. He has 18. He's a big shot maker, just like Jason, I kid you not, kid, and Glenn Robinson. They make the big shot. Man, this has been a great game. Oh, it's been super up here, Mike. It's worth all the perspiration and sweat. Williams, baseline against Capel. Parks. Patience and poise, important now in handling the basketball. Both clubs offensively, execution becomes big. Marty Clark drops it for Capel. Three. And the freshman can't connect. That's perfect execution, though. Good dribble penetration. And kicking it out for the wide open three. Phelps back the other way. Shoot it there. Up. Look at this. Look at this here. Look at how they're playing. It. Six feet off him. He wants motion, though. He wants motion. Well, he's the number four all-time assist man. He's not a scorer. He's looking. He's got to shoot that shot, though, to earn some respect. He's capable, Mike. It's five against four on the inside if he doesn't shoot it because Hill just gives help. Shot clock at five. Montrose, this is the play that worked the last time. Blocked from behind by Grant Hill. Trying to force that. Should have kicked it back to Phelps. Nice Capel play. Three. Nice play. Capel under control. Makes the good dish. Grant Hill set that up. Oh. Got one. Holy cow. That's incredible. the surface and how good he's going to be. Capel forced it up Montrose with a loose ball. Four-point Carolina lead. What I love is the way he runs. Throw it to Wallace. He was wide open. Williams wanted the get shot. A buried the three. Get a T.O., Mike. You better get a T.O., baby. That may have gotten Donald Williams back. A three-pointer to make it a seven-point game. Seven-point lead with the nine left. Mike, a big three. Look at it right here. We're going to see Mr. Mr. Williams right here. But this guy here is going to be wide open down in the lane. He's a perfect rebound in position. And look at him. He's wide open. Look at Wallace. He said, give me the ball. I jam it. Williams says, no, I'm going splash. Trifecta. Put three on the board. What a game this guy has had. He's played sensational. They are a much better team when he's on the court. He I gives agree. them size, quickness. He gives them agility. Now the lead is seven. Meek gets it against Montrose. Blocked by Two Salvador. Points. Starting Thursday night, it is the greatest show in tournament history, ACC basketball. Coming your way from Charlotte, we'll start up with a play-in game. You'll get it all as Montrose hits the jump hook. Nice slide inside. Starting to utilize the big guy a lot more. His numbers would be so much better if they used them. The lead back to seven. Grant Hill for three. A long three. And Carolina is taking control. Four on one. Phelps. Oh, nice in. play. And Grant Hill stole it from Stackhouse. What a tremendous turnaround right there. To oh, he pass. lost. He walked. And they didn't call it. Did you see a walk? I thought he carried the ball. I thought he did, but what a four-point turnaround that was. What Grant a Hill with a brilliant play. He stopped a four-on-one fast break, then got the assist at the other end. And it was a four-point turnaround. A sensational play. That's 
that's why he's a superstar, Mike, and an All-American. This is the best I have seen North Carolina play in many, many a game. Both of these teams are playing at a tremendous level. Shot clock at five. Williams. Offensive rebound. Stackhouse. Jerry Stackhouse with the great bounds, the great legs. They're playing with feeling. They're playing with passion. And when you do something and have passion in what you do, your game just elevates. 77-70. Hill, baseline. Nice feed to me. And he missed it. Got it back. What an effort he's having today. Did you see that pass? Eric Meek has a dozen, and Grant Hill has been spectacular. He's passing the basketball out of the magic man. They need a defensive stop here, though, Dick. Williams with a runner where he's been so good all night long. Hits another one. Maybe they're easy shots for him, but they uh -uh. look off his nails here. He look at Dean. 18 points. Look at Dean doing a dance on that sideline. He's got to be proud of their effort. They came in here. Phelps looks hurt. Phelps, Phelps just looks got hurt. hit in the throat by Montross as he ran by him. And Hill missed the layup. And Phelps mispracticed this week because he was hitting the throat against Wake Forest. Hey, I think he got hit in the same place. Eric Montross put his arms out to indicate the defense to everybody else. And Phelps ran right into a forearm. We've got a timeout. 3.38 to go in the game. The lead is seven. Carolina leading Duke. 79-72. 3.38 to go. Our Pizza Hut storyline from Durham, North Carolina. 50 points inside Wallace with four spectacular dunks. Duke, Cherokee Park says 21 points and five rebounds. I'll tell you, another key player has been Derek Phelps on that sideline in the second half getting Eric Montross involved offensively. He was zero for zero in the first half. Had only one rebound in 14 minutes of play. In the second half, he's been a much better player of Montross. Duke trying to go to the trap. Williams, who has been on fire, especially in the second half. I think Donald is back. And it's 81-72. He has 20 points. The Donald has found his stroke. And we're not talking about Marla's man. Duke right now is going to need to hit some threes. Here's a hole, I believe, on Stackhouse. Of course, big men say, don't come in here. This oh, is my territory. There's but it's his contact. own guy. Yeah, the contact. I remember, that's been a problem. He missed practice Thursday because of that problem against Wake Forest. Wake Hill at the line for the Wake Forest one and one. The foul was on Stackhouse. It was his third. They convert these, they'll go to some kind of full court pressure. Front end of a one and one, missed by Hill. They're gonna probably trap McGinnis a little bit now. Try to use Grant Hill as a guy that'll gamble a little bit defensively. So he's getting ready, watch Hill, there he comes. Carolina in control, McGinnis into the lane. He is so cool as a freshman. What a nice job he did there to beat the trap. Hill was ready to rotate over a trap. He split it and pulled up under control for the little jumper. Parks to Lang. Hesitated. Will draw the foul inside. I think it's on Wallace. And that will be number two on Rasheed Wallace. Starting Thursday night from Charlotte, North Carolina, you'll see all eight games of the Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament. Just a tremendous show, and they have finally figured out the brackets today. Duke will play the winner of the Clemson-North Carolina State game on Thursday night. Then the second game in the opening round Friday, Virginia and Maryland. North Carolina will face Florida State, Wake Forest against Georgia Tech. And I think there are seven teams that could win. Well, you know, North Carolina gets a little break by finishing number two because they don't get Georgia Tech. They get Florida yeah. State, and with their size, should have an advantage over the four-guard four guard attack of Florida State. Montrose going to the sideline with four fouls. Really established himself on the post here in the second half. That cuts it to 10, but there's only 2.36 left. Got to use some clock right now. Anticipate the double team. Look opposite against the double team and find the open man. Spread the court. Calabria just beating the 10-second count. Salvador did a great job coming up as the release man. The valuable minutes McGinnis is getting here late in the game. And Duke allowing Carolina to take time off the clock. The shot clock down to 11. Now it's at 5. McGinnis. 16-footer swish. What a nice performance under pressure. I really he has gotten better and better as the season has worn along. He has seven points. Grant Hill for three.
McGinnis with the rebound. Ahead to Williams. Smart play. Pulls it out. Yeah, Donald Williams very heady. Backing it out. Spread the court. Use the clock. They have really played well. This is the Carolina team that people were talking about when the season started. Preseason, everybody's number one. Four starters back. Three super freshmen. Don't want to get together. Two guys together. Very easy to guard. Carolina with a chance to sweep Duke. If they sweep Duke and can go on and win the postseason ACC tournament, I think they'll get that number one seed along with Missouri, Connecticut, and Arkansas. And Collins for a desperation three. Lang couldn't keep it alive. Uh-oh. Uh, hails it. Calabria. Good night. Hello. It's over. It's over. 87-73, a game that had been close, tied, or within two points most of the night has been broken open by the Tar Heels. When you think what this class has really established, when you talk about both classes, you start with North Carolina winning the national title, an ACC title, ACC regular season title. Duke has gone stone cold at the end. And Calabria is hurt. Take a look here at the accomplishments as Calabria gets some treatment. National championship, two final fours, 109 and 26 in four years. That's over 25 Ws. And look at the Duke class. But the one thing about the Duke class, remember, a little help there by two guys named Hurley and Lakner. And on North Carolina, you could say certainly the heart and guts last year, George Lynch. Carolina has hit 12 of its last 15 shots to pull away. And it looks like the last game at home for Grant Hill will be only the fourth loss in their last 61 at home. Calabria being helped to the North Carolina bench. It looks like he got hit in the face on that last exchange. Yeah, it looks like the left eye. He's had some big moments in that Carolina blue, especially when Donald Williams went down. Watch the elbow of Cherokee Parks. Ouch. Yeah, there's the contact. And hey, what a job, though. Congratulations, Warren Stewart. Going undefeated today in a conference like the Big Eight is something special. Penn went undefeated as well in the Ivy League. I don't care what league you play in. You go undefeated and win games on a road. That is special. So a salute to Missouri and Norm Stewart. Cherokee Parks only two points off his career high. He really stepped up tonight with 23. We saw the real, though, North Carolina tonight. Yep. Mike. And I think the presence of Rasheed Wallace in that lineup early in the game really gave them really a strong start. And how about Donald Williams? All those slashing shots that he hit in the lane then finally goes back outside, hit a couple of threes. They need his shooting. Spreading the court. Chemistry so important. Duke not going to foul, just a foul. What a great year for Duke. My choice, coach of the year in the ACC, right here. Mike Krzyzewski as they get a deuce. He loses Thomas Hill. He loses Bob Hurley. Personality changes on the team. But what a job he's done. Here's two guys, a Hall of Famer, Dean Smith, and a future Hall of Famer, Mike Krzyzewski. North Carolina goes to 24-6. and six. Duke falls to 22-4. and four. We'll see him again at the ACC tournament. The final score, 87-77, North Carolina for Dick Vitale and our entire crew. This is Mike Patrick. Thanks for watching, everybody. Now let's go back to the studio and join our pal John Saunders. John? All right, Mike and Dick, thanks a lot. That was hard to figure out. Just a blowout in the last five minutes.